Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus. Our God is mighty to save, and we give Him all the praise and all the glory. Let us declare this. Our God is mighty to save. Our God is faithful. Our God is true, and our God is real. I welcome you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Prophet Rian. This is on the Watchtower. It is around 10 to 8 South African time. This is Lighthouse Radio broadcasting the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. The good news of his salvation that our God is a real and our God is truly alive. Give him all the praise and all the glory. We welcome you to another week. Uh, where are we, wherever you are listening, we I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus. Just a quick reminder, on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock African time, we have the discipleship course, the English one. And on Thursday evenings at the same time, 7 o'clock, we have the discipleship course in Afrikaans. Uh, if you want to get hold of Lighthouse Radio, uh, you can send us an email at info at lighthouseradio.co.za. If you have any requests, any prayer requests, or any requests for help or counseling, you can always send an email to spiritual counseling at lighthouseradio.co.za or you can also send me an email directly at station manager at lighthouseradio.co.za Like I said, this is on the Watchtower and tonight I want to discuss with you a subject uh, which is called Understanding in Wisdom the legal battle in the spiritual realm. Understanding the legal battle in the spiritual realm. You see, we need to understand that we are involved in a war against the devil. And we all know this, that every day the devil is roaming like a lion looking to devour. It after all says in 1 Peter chapter 5 that we need to be alert and of sober mind. And the King James put it as to be sober and to be vigilant. So tonight I will deal about the spiritual warfare. Of course, many times when we talk about the spiritual warfare, we we picture this 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 this, this absolute this, this actual battle between angels and demons, between light and darkness. Uh, but we need to understand that when we talk about the spiritual battle. Most of this spiritual battle is actually one that is being fought on a, on, on, a, on a legal level. So we need to understand that how this battle is a legal one. Once we can understand this, this is where our true victory they lies. So as I says, said, we are all involved in a war against the devil. We all know this. You see... When we deal with the devil, we need to be sober-minded. We need to be vigilant. We need to be awake and alert because he is on the prowl and he is looking for means and ways to ensnare and to entrap. But let us remember the devil cannot devour just at whim as he pleases. He devours where he has the legal right to do so. You see, as sometimes we get this picture of the devil walking around and he just wants to jump on anybody and he will just devour anybody he wants to. That, of course, is not how the devil or how the spiritual realm operates. He needs a natural right. He needs a legal right to actually attack you. He needs a legal right to actually influence your life, to actually harass you. You see, we need to understand that the devil will always attack you. He will always be coming against you but the but if you give him no no legal right if you give him no foothold he can't do anything against you because Colossians 2 verse 15 says that the work that our Lord Jesus Christ has defeated and overcome the work of the devil on the cross so if you remain under the blood of Jesus then the devil can't do anything against you so we need to have a, 
a clear understanding of how the devil works and how the spiritual realm works. Sure, he uses his demons to oppress and harass, to manipulate and even cause great harm. But let, and, and we need to understand that devil is also a master at knowing how the spiritual realm works. Ultimately, our battle is a legal one. To put it simply, if we give the devil a right to attack, he will attack. If we give the devil no foothold according to Ephesians 4.26, he cannot do much to hinder us or to entrap us. Certain translations say well, that we, we must give him no opportunity uh, or no place for the devil to come into our lives. Let us understand by wisdom the spiritual battle is very much a legal one. Everything is about legal ground and the legal right in the spiritual realm. If you are under the covenant by your right of adoption as sons or daughters of the Lord, then God is your Father and the kingdom is given unto his disciples according to Luke 12. Therefore we have the legal right to act on behalf of the Lord and the kingdom. We cannot pretend to act on behalf of the Lord when we do not have that relationship with the Lord. Therefore if we have not truly been adopted. After all, the Lord knows who truly follow Him and those who truly follow the world. So, if we are talking here about legal right and legal ground, we are talking about legalities. For the kingdom of God is run as a heavenly government. There are laws. God is not a God of disorder and lawlessness. If we transgress, sin or walk in iniquity, which we do, by the way, when we do advocate sin or the iniquities in our bloodline, then we find ourselves out of order in regards to God's kingdom. Therefore, if we act illegally within the spiritual realm, the devil has a right to be our adversary, which means he has the right to accuse us and he has the right to take a stand against us. Yet, when we are in right standing with the Lord and the devil has no legal case against us, it is that simple. It says, for example, in 1 John 5 verse 4, For whoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. And also in Ephesians 1 verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Verse 4, Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And we read in verse 5, Having predestined us to, to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the blood. And there it says in verse 7, In him we have a redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Let us understand that Satan was cast out of heaven because he wanted to rule the dominion of heaven. He was cast down to earth for a season to have dominion on earth. Satan is described as the ruler of this world for he has legal ground in this territory. However, this doesn't mean God has given up dominion or control. God still controls all dominions, according to Colossians 1. Meaning he is the ultimate king, a ruler of heaven, earth, and even the lake of fire. Everything that can be seen as a territory, spiritually or physically, is under the headship of God. Satan has been given that earth to rule and reign for a season. And I want to emphasize this, he has been given, given the right to rule. He has been sent to the earth to act as a temporary landlord, until the day of the return of Jesus. The problem is, Satan thinks he is the landlord who will stay and rule forever, and Satan's demise is written clearly in Revelations, and so is the rule and dominion of God. Revelations 20, from verse 10, it says, The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. But let us understand, so Satan has legal ground, legal right on this earth. But if you're under the covenant of God, God under the blood, the blood 
is all powerful, then the devil can't hold you. But if you're away from the covenant, if you're not under the covenant, then the devil can attack you. He's got a right to attack you. This is why the world is as the world is, because the world has drifted away from God. Not God away from the world, the way the world has chosen the devil, and so has given legal right to the devil to attack. So we ignore the fact that those outside the covenant are susceptible every day to his deceptions and trickery and cruelty and murderous rampages. We ignore the fact that his cohorts, the demons, influence people all day, and some of them possess humans so that the humans in the power of demons can afflict harm and damage. We ignore the fact that Christians are hardly these days walking in the spirit or in truth, or in the covenant as they should, and so they give all kinds of legal ground for Satan to attack, and to deceive, and to beguile. We all know Psalm 91, which begins with, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Mighty. So who will abide in his presence? Is it not they who dwell in the secret place? And what is the secret place? Let us go to John 15 verse 4 where it says, Abide in me and I will abide in you. And how do we abide in the Lord? By obeying the Lord, by submitting, by yielding, and by laying down our kingdoms for the glory of his eternal rule. Remember the scripture of Revelation 21 verse 6 from verse 6 it says, And he said to me, It is done, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderous, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You see, those described as the cowardly and the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderous, sexually immoral, the sorcerers and so on, have all transgressed and violated the kingdom and the laws of the kingdom of heaven. Without repentance, the devil has accused them before the Lord and has a legal case against them. And since they are acting illegally within the spiritual realm according, regarding the kingdom of heaven because of their sins and their iniquity, they will find themselves outside the walls of, of the new Jerusalem and they are part of the second death. Revelation 9 from verse 20 says, But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders, all their sorceries, all their sexual immorality, all their thefts. If there is no repentance which becomes iniquity, then we sit with a problem where the devil can accuse and to devour. We clearly saw in Revelation 9 that here we had a case where those who did not die because of the plagues, they refuse not to repent. Sin without repentance leads to iniquity. And therefore we sit with a problem that because of sin, and, or especially iniquity, you give all the right to the devil to accuse you because he, because we have given him a legal right because of sin to attack us. Indeed, the devil has duped and deceived the bride into a state of complacency. Ignorance, apathy and passivity. We laugh at him at our own peril, for we are all so vulnerable to his deceptions, no matter how spiritually mature we may believe we are. We are forever vulnerable to his trickery and his demons are more than ready to pounce. The word says that we perish because of a lack of knowledge. We need to realize that if the devil has a legal case against us because of our sins or iniquities or our apostasy or whatever, then our prayers can be hindered from being answered and that the devil can continue to accuse and he can continue to stand against us. And this can affect our ministry, finances, health 
and relationships. Think, for example, about Ezekiel 8. Ezekiel 8. This is the part where God showed Ezekiel the pagan practices within the temple. And we read, and he said to me, this is, and God said to Ezekiel, Have you seen this, O son of man? Is it a trivial thing to the house of Judah to commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence. Then they have returned to provoke me to anger. Indeed, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore, I will also act in fury. My eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, I will not hear them. You see, there was a legal case against the elders of Judah. They were committing idolatry and had provoked God to anger, so God himself returned away and would not answer their prayers. And so we can read in Romans 1 verse 20, where it says, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify God, Him as God, and nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. And therefore God also gave them over to uncleanliness, in the lust of their eye of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the Creator rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. It says in verse 26, For this reason God gave them over to vile passions. So why did this all happen? Because... They had chose, chosen to exchange the glory of God for idolatry, sin for the glory of God, the holiness of God. And they do that this intentionally, and they did this with purpose to lead people astray. And if you continue to read this passage, it says that those who disobeyed God, they were filled with all righteousness. Therefore, those who were vile were given up to uncleanliness and the lust of their hearts. They were given up. They were given up. It means that the devil had a legal right to attack them. Let us understand if the devil has a legal right to attack you because of your sin, your iniquity, or your immoral behavior, then there is no protection. The blood can't protect you. Only when you are under the blood, in holiness, in purity, in walking in truth, Will the blood protect you? We have very little defense in the spiritual realm and before God when we are operating illegally and when we transgress the laws of the kingdom and when the devil has a case against us. Ultimately, the condition of our soul, if we can be brutally honest, is the product of our own choice. What we choose will dictate our lives. It is the product of our free will because we have chosen to listen to lies and deceptions. And we have chosen to submit to the pain or the bitterness or the hurt that has come across our paths in so many different forms. We can choose to be offended. We can choose how we react to trials and tribulations. And we can choose to either fight evil with evil or we can counter with evil with good. To hold on to pain, anger, bitterness and unforgiveness is a choice. And the devil wants us to make the wrong choice so that we give him the legal ground and their permission through hate and darkness to destroy us. In a nutshell, if we want to overcome as disciples of the Lord, we must give the devil no legal right or ground to attack us, to oppress or to influence our lives. It is that simple. Colossians 2, verse 15 says, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them on the cross. It's talking about Jesus. Under the blood of Jesus, the devil cannot triumph. It is when you are away from the blood that the devil can attack you. 
If you're under the blood, true to the covenant, and you have given the devil no foothold, he cannot influence or harm you. This is what it says in Revelation 12 verse 11. And they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Yes, we overcome by the blood, and we overcome when we lay down the world and the self and our needs and our own desires. We overcome when we lay down the old ways and our carnality. We overcome because we have given the devil no right or legal ground to attack or to abuse or to manipulate us. Do you realize that Christians can be oppressed by demons if they have provided any open doors or legal ground through which demons can attack? To stop demonic oppressions, the legal ground must be reclaimed. It is that simple. Do you realize you can give the devil the right to influence your life, to harass, to manipulate or oppress if you have given him the right to do so? And so often the channels or the process of such demonic influence or harassment of oppression comes to the believer or the unbeliever is often exactly the same. What we are dealing here with is legal ground. Legal ground means the unbeliever or the believer has given the demonic powers the right to come into a person's life and to work and to function within that person's spirit. So, we need to understand that there is a legal ground and the devil will use that legal ground to Right. We're speaking about how we need to begin to understand legal ground and how this battle is ultimately a legal one. So let us look at a couple of key scriptures and understand how this legal right works. Let us go to Matthew 25 where it says the Son of Man will judge the nations. And it says from verse 31, when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of on the throne of His glory and all the nations will be gathered before Him. And He will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And He will set the sheep on His right hand but the goats on the left. Then the King will say to those on the right hand, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food, and I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in, and I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you gave, came to me. Revelation 19, it says about Christ on a white horse, verse 11. Now, when I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in his righteousness he judges and makes war, his eyes were like flames of fire on his head was many crowns. A name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven clothed in fire and white and clean followed him on a white horse. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with that with it he strikes the nations, and he himself will rule with the rod of iron, and he himself treads the wine press of the fierceness and the wrath of the Almighty God. And he is on his robe and his thighs a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So here the Lord himself is described as a judge. And a judge, of course, has the final say regarding what is right and wrong. And a final decision regarding punishment or forgiveness rests with the judge. The devil has and never will be described as a judge. For the final authority and power rests with the Lord. Countless of scripture speaks about how all authority and power has been given unto our Lord. You can go and read the parable in Luke 18 as well, where it describes the Lord as the judge. Because in this parable that Jesus alludes to the fact that the Lord is a just judge who rewards those who cry out to him day and night. Again, the Lord rewards the righteous for those who stand under his authority and have fled the treatments of the devil. So, on the one hand, consider that we're talking about the legal battle, we're talking about legal right, and how the spiritual battle is one for 
over over legalities. Consider on the one hand that you have God who is the righteous judge. Now the devil in contrary fashion is described as an accuser and an adversary. Revelation 12 verse 10 says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Lord and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren. We accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. So here we find the devil is described as the accuser. So the word in Greek is katecheros, uh, which is also found in John 8 verse 10, Acts 23, 30, 35, Acts 24 verse 8, Revelation 12 verse 10. So the word derives from kata and agora, which means against one in the assembly. Therefore a complainant at law. Can you see this? So first you have God who is the righteous judge. You have the accuser, the devil. And the, the very term accuser is a legal term. It is a complainant at law. Then we also consider 1 Peter 5 verse 8 which says, Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Remember adversary as an enemy or opponent is related to the words adversarial or hostile, or adverse, meaning against or contrary. The Greek word for adversaries is antidikos, which is defined as an opponent at law. So again, you find that both terms of adversary and, you know, the, the both terms of, of adversary you know, it comes from the term, it, it, is, it is both a term, the accuser and the adversary is both legal terms, speaking about a complainant or opponent at law. There, Satan therefore acts as, a, as such as an adversary, bringing the lawsuit of darkness against a believer for their eternal damnation. 1 Peter 5 verse 8. So what you find is God is the righteous judge. You have the devil who is the accuser, the adversary who now brings the legal case, your legal case if you've given them legal ground before the righteous judge. And remember, God is a righteous judge. He has to be fair. If there is a, a legal case, he has to hear that case. Now, offsetting this is the perfect sacrifice of Christ Jesus. John 19 verse 10. So, Antidikos can therefore be seen as a technical legal term used in antiquity of an adversary in a courtroom, therefore someone seeking official damages. So both the terms accuser and adversary deals with legality as someone who brings a legal case in a court of law. This is how the devil works. He roams about looking and seeking where he can bring a legal case against us. And he could do so where we walk in sin, iniquity, idolatry, rebellion, deception, and immorality. So, we need to understand this. You find God as the righteous judge. Then we find that the devil is the adversary. He is your opponent at law, looking to bring a case against you before the legal judge. Because he knows if he's got a legal case, that God has to heal that legal case. So, now, let's continue with this, with, this, with this theme. 1 John 2 says, My little children, these things are right to you, so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. John 16, it says, But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Now the Greek word for advocate is parakletos, which is found in John 14 verse 16, verse 26, John 15 verse 26, John 16 verse 17, in the words of Jesus, with reference to the Holy Spirit, and then also in 1 John 2 verse 1, referring to Christ himself. The short definition of parakletos is an advocate, comforter, helper, therefore an intercessor, a consoler, and a comforter. So can we understand this? So where the devil is the accuser or the adversary in a legal sense, within a spiritual court, 
we find the Lord himself is our advocate. So you find God the Father is the judge, the devil is the adversary, the, the, the opponent at law, but you find Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is your parakletos, he is your advocate, he is the one defending you. So can we understand this? Can we understand how this is all a legal battle? So, what we need to understand is that in a courtroom, God will hear the case. If the devil has a case to bring before you, he will do so if he has a legal right to do so. Yet, if the devil has no legal right to present a case before God, then Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit himself also, will defend your case. And if there is no ground, if there is no right for the devil to act, then that case will be dismissed out of the legal court. But if you have given the devil the legal right, if, you, if, you, if you've given him the means and the ways to bring a legal case before you, then unfortunately, that no matter who your advocate is, God the Father will have to hear that case. And you will have to act justly according to the Constitution and the laws of heaven. And I just want to also remind you that the Greek prefix para in parakletos refers to being alongside, just as what we get the word paramedic. So in John 16, Jesus was therefore saying that it is beneficial for him to go so that the third person of the God, the Holy Spirit, can come alongside us and through the baptism in full us to such a measure that we have 24 hours all day access to the Lord Almighty. Why? So that we can walk in truth, holiness, purity, and in the wisdom of the Lord, so that the devil cannot have a case against us in order to devour us. So, God has given us the Holy Spirit. What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Then? It is to walk with us. It is to guide us. It is to lead us. It is to give us wisdom. According to Isaiah 11, Verse, verse 1, it says that the Holy Spirit is the one of might and power and of knowledge and of, and, and, and of the fear of the Lord. So let us understand that our legal battle is a battle of legality. God knew that we cannot fight this battle alone. God knew that if we did not have a parakletos, an advocate who was with us all the time, who can advise us, who can give us wisdom, how to live, how to behave, how to speak, how to act, as not to give the legal right to the devil, he knew, God knew, that we will not be able to survive in this world. So what God has done is, he has said, but I will give you the parakletos. I will give you an advocate who will be with you 24 hours a day. So that you can lead a life in holiness and purity and truth, so that the devil, your adversary, your opponent and law cannot triumph against you. This is what God basically did. He knew that without the Holy Spirit, we will be in trouble. He knew that without the Holy Spirit, we will be in trouble because we will not have the wisdom or the knowledge to deal with this legal matter. Yet God says, but wait a minute, this is very simple. I am the righteous judge. If the devil will bring a righteous case before me, then I will have to hear it. And if, if the devil has a right against the accused, then unfortunately God will allow he, he, will, he will part a decision. And, you see, this is why we need to understand. This is, you know, we need to understand this very clearly. Sin has a consequence. Iniquity has a consequence in our life. It's because there is a legal right. There is a legal right for that, sin, for that consequence to be, in, to be enacted. We cannot come to the Lord and say, God, you know, I have the accuser has come against me, yet we yet there is a legal right, there is a legal ground for the accuser to attack us. And we will look next week Monday more in depth into the subject matter. But ultimately what it comes down to 
It's like you have God, the Father, the judge. You have the devil, your accuser, your adversary, your opponent of the law. You have God. You have, you have Jesus. You have the Holy Spirit as your, as your advocate who is defending you. And we will see that the only way that you can really not give the, 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 the right to the devil to accuse you is through repentance is to repent of that of that action so that the devil will not have that legal right to continue accusing you or there is the other option is not to land up in the courtroom by listening and obeying to the Lord all the time but this is just where I want to leave us tonight to understand that we are fighting a legal battle this is a battle by choices this is about the, the choices that we make every day. This is a choice over, you know, walking either in sin or in, in iniquity or walking in holiness. This is a choice that we make every day if we can listen to God, if we can listen to Jesus, our advocate, or to the Holy Spirit, or if we can listen to the world. Because we have to understand where there is a legal right, and we have given the right for the enemy to attack us, then the enemy will attack us. Remember, he is walking, he is prowling around, trying to devour those who is giving him a legal right. So we need to be alert, and we need to be vigilant, and we need to be sober. We need to realize that there is a legal, legal battle going on. And we, are, we, are, we are going to end up in a courtroom every time that we, trans, we, we transgress and we trespass. And this is why, of course, as well, while the doctrine of once saved, always saved is so dangerous. Because if you do not repent for every time that you've given a legal route to the devil, trust me, you are going to be continuously in the courtroom. And the consequences of your sin and iniquity is going to have a huge impact on your life because of legal ground. So next week, Monday on the Watchtower, I will continue with the subject about the battle over legal rights. I will be looking at the life of Job so that we can put this all into context. We will go deeper into how the spiritual battle works. We will also be looking at, eventually be looking at the doctrine that, that says that you've been saved, always saved, which is an erroneous doctrine. We will also be looking at different legal rights and legal grounds that you give to the, to the devil. So I ask you to remain tuned in on Monday night at quarter to eight o'clock on the Watchtower with me, Pastor Rion, so that we can explore this, so that you can have victory. Victory simply comes when you give the devil no foothold. Victory comes when you give the devil no legal right. When you listen to the Lord, when you, when you do what the Lord tells you to do, and you lead a holy and a pure life, Led by the Holy Spirit, yielded to the Holy Spirit. It is that simple. Our battle we wage is a legal one. It's one that is played out in the courtroom of heaven. And I leave you again with this thought. God the judge, the devil the adversary, the accuser, the opponent of the law, and you have Jesus your advocate or the Holy Spirit your advocate defending you. This is the situation that is played out in the world every day amongst all believers. The devil wants you in the courtroom. He wants to accuse you. And he wants you to give him a right. That is why he's prowling, looking for those to devour. Listen to the Lord. Yield to him. Trust him. And obey him. Then you will not end up and end up in that court all the time. So next week, Monday, we will continue with this discussion more in depth. And the, following dis and the, and the Mondays that will follow, we will continue to discuss legal ground, legal battles so that we can overcome and be triumphant. And I just want to end up in prayer. It says, Lord, thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, that we can praise you. Thank you, Lord, that we can worship you. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day, O oh God. Lord, help us, give us wisdom, give us knowledge, give us discernment, O oh God. Lord, so that we can lead a life worthy to you. So, Lord, that we will not give the devil a legal ground to attack us, Lord. So, Lord, we can stand, O oh God, in your presence, O oh God, without any reason for the devil to bring a case or a lawsuit, Lord, against us. Thank you, O Lord, for this day, O oh God. We praise you in all the glory. 
And to all the listeners, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord bless you, may the Lord be with you. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, 